All right, kings and queens, welcome. Let's talk Derek Jackson. I fall short of calling this man a clown. And the reason why I say I fall short of calling him a clown, because he's not solely responsible for repetitive cheating. I'll get into that in a minute. He's not solely responsible. At the end of the day, as women, ladies, I'm going to keep it real. We've got to begin to take assessment of who we are and who we are with and the impact it could potentially have on our entire well-being from the mind, the body, to the spirit. I'm not sure if Derek Jackson has ever been faithful in this marriage. The more we be, like the more we begin to hear about him and his affairs and I, I don't even know if he's ever stopped cheating from the first time we found out, which is why I said I'm not sure. Has this man ever been faithful in the marriage? Okay? It appears as if he selected a young girl that he dated in high school. Hence, the reason I'm, I'm completely against young love. Like, not young love, but young marriages. Okay? According to what we hear from men, when you think about the topics in social media, and when men are describing the woman, the ideal woman, Denea was all of that. She valued wholeness. She appeared to value family, community, and femininity. My question is, when you find a woman like that, men, what happens to the, ha- what happens to the happily ever after that women expect in return for, for those characteristics that I just named off? We've seen it happen many times. We've seen women give themselves away to men, okay? You can create a spectrum and line the women up. And the end goal for many women has been mass disappointment. Unfortunately, this generation does not appear to value marriage because we are now normalizing side pieces, adultery, etc. You can name the behaviors. You can name the violations. And in my opinion... I feel like we feel like it's normal and it's not until women start to sit down and really take a look at themselves. And I mean, a hard look, whether you are aspiring to be a side chick (laughs) or aspiring to become a wife, take a look at yourself and put some respect on your own name, put some respect on your own self-esteem, put some respect on your own self-worth. I could run down a list of women, women in the public view, or women I know personally who are happily, listen to me carefully, happily attempting to reconstruct or revitalize a man's moral compass. Ladies, you got to stop. Now let's get into this assessment. For those of you who are just tuned in, or if you're new to the channel, welcome. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television, but most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the black experience. All right, so I may say a few things that may leave you baffled or clutching your pearls because I got to keep it real. I've been contemplating if I even wanted to talk about this guy and his divorce from his wife. There's a couple of things you need to know about him. He is a self-proclaimed relationship guru. And at one point, he had a very large platform. He positioned himself as an advocate for women. I mean, a couple of times I listened to him in the past few years ago, but he definitely positioned himself as an advocate for women. His primary focus was on men who utilize women as sex objects and tools. Child, this man, (laughs) I guess he was talking to himself and warning us to Um, look out for men like him. And if you go back and listen to everything that he was saying, damn, I was like, if his wife would have really put her ear to the ground, to the streets, he was telling her everything that he was doing to her. Y'all, if that's not narcissistic behavior, I don't know what it, what is. Um, I'm going to say probably close to two years ago, all hell broke loose. He was outed as a cheater and he received the title, the label of being a fake relationship guru, which he should have, right? Because your credentials are invalid. 
You know, everything that you were talking about was BS because all of the things that you were warning women not to do and what to look for in a man, you were actually describing yourself. So he was doing all of this crap to his, to his wife. Um, he was also outed as a habitual cheater, a repeat offender. And listen, I'm not just talking about no cheating. Like you catch him in the restaurant. I'm talking about things that you would have to subscribe to a site to see. So I feel like in order to get ahead of the hoopla, he went on social media, y'all. He declared his love for his wife. He declared his love for his church and he's going to do the right thing. He, um, he stated that the church was holding him accountable and they were supporting him and praying for he and his wife. Y'all. And then he brought his wife on camera And that's when I started to scratch my head. And I was like, wait a minute, something seems off because what kind of man would do this to his wife? In my opinion, I feel like he kind of manipulated his wife to show her, um, not looking her best on camera. Okay. I don't know the point of that, but it wasn't a very good representation. It wasn't a very good um, introduction of her because she did not look her best. I feel like he used her to build back his credibility after he got caught. I'm going to stay in my marriage. I'm going to work it out. Not only that, my doting, plain wife is supporting me. So he started to quietly build his credibility in the market. And then he just got caught cheating again, y'all, in a very sensual, sensual video, okay? He he takes his ass, he runs down, and he files for divorce. Tossed her aside like he never knew her. I believe there's going to be a lot of psychological damage this woman is going to have to endure. I believe she's going to have to work on rebuilding herself from a mental health perspective. I think this is just the beginning for her. I think this emotional turmoil will begin once the divorce is final. And this is why I say this. Ladies, sometimes you will give your all to a man. And when I say all, I'm talking about your entire being to a man only to discover that man never loved you or respected you in the first place. Now, I said clutch your pearls. Remember? I said clutch your pearls because I'm going to say a lot of shit today and I'm going to push some buttons and I'm going to trigger some folks. I don't care what you have deemed as normal. Remember I said put some respect on your name. Put some respect on your self-esteem. Put some respect on your self-awareness. When a man dogs you out like that and you equate that to love and to normality, start to see a therapist so that you can build up your confidence and so that you can start healing to be able to separate the two and look at it for what it really is, y'all. That's a form of emotional abuse. And if you equate it to love, You've somehow normalized, no, not normalized. You've somehow neutralized and pushed down what you really need. If you think a man cheating on you is normal and boys will be boys, you got to start to talk to a therapist. Okay. Cause at that point you're not choosing yourself. I'm gonna come back to that. This man used this woman. This awkward behavior that we are witnessing from her in real time, I think that's a lot of his doing. Because see, be not deceived, evil company corrupts good morals. I think she's become that way over time. When you stay with somebody that long and you start acting like that on the internet the way she's acting, in my opinion, 
there was a lot of emotional manipulation and emotional abuse possibly occurring behind the scenes. And now she's bought into it by way of her behavior. I also believe that he alienated her from a world of reality to the point that she has no idea. Okay. She has no idea that her behavior has become somewhat odd. Now I'm going to have to issue a very bold statement. When they came out and they talked about his adulterous behaviors and I'm telling you to, uh, when I'm talking to you, I'm saying, imagine the worst thing that you can catch your husband doing and not just in bed. Imagine like a television channel that you would pay for. Okay. I feel some kind of way that that church coerced that girl into staying with him when she was actually on the fence about leaving, potentially leaving her marriage and they coerced her into staying. That was a very selfish move, in my opinion, on the, on the behalf of the church. Because here, here's where you have to be able to, you know how they say, separate church from a state? This girl was having a mental health crisis. The first thing they should have done was seek outside professional help for her. Not within the church, but clinical mental health support from a therapist and or a psychotherapist. Okay. If you realize the girl said she had became so obsessed with watching those videos that she found of him over and over. And she compared what she has to what she saw in the videos to what other women have and how their bodies were responding to her husband. She was having a mental health crisis. She couldn't stop obsessing over it. Okay. And then the church steps in and encourages her to stay with him. I don't like that. I don't like that. That was the first move. I think the first move was to save her. (laughs) Forget about him. He all right. He's a man. But first of all, let's, let's make sure we give her the level of support that she needs as a woman. We got to make sure she's in order. Okay. Cause when somebody's has, has really, um, kind of, and that's my dog in the background y'all. Cause y'all, I know y'all be giving me feedback, but they follow me everywhere. But when somebody has entered into that realm or that spectrum of needing that level of emotional support, you know what? We'll come back to this relationship shit in a minute. And I felt like that was a very selfish move on the church because now look what it, look what it has gotten her. Nothing but further disappointment. Okay. She has to relive this all over again. Here's the thing, ladies. Some of y'all can be so hard-headed. Let me just say some of us can be so hard-headed, so freaking gullible to your own demise. Can't nobody tell you nothing about your man. You could tell us everything about your man. And then when we respond, I don't know if that's right. You know, maybe you should be with somebody else. Then you get mad, okay? Because sometimes people on the outside have a better introspection. Intra- Am I saying that? Oh, Lord, I'd be messing up these words. Introspection. I hope I'm saying it right. If not, eat my ass up in the comments like y'all normally do. But sometimes people on the outside looking in have a better view than you do because they're on the outside looking in, okay? So sometimes women can be their own worst enemies, Okay. In many cases, you're left with little to no choice, but to allow them to crash and burn. You know, if you're a friend, if you're a family member and you're trying to tell them, you know, I don't know, I think you need to move on from this one. Well, I can't because of this and I can't because of that. And it's sad because a lot of this crap can be avoided if we just pause ladies and think rationally. But let me tell you something. When a woman is focused on keeping a man She ain't trying to hear nothing from the crowd, period. And there we have it. So there were some things that Denia Jackson, and I hope I'm saying it right, Denia, she shared from her own accounts that should have required someone in her circle, like I said, 
to get her some behavioral health or mental health resources. She shared that when she found out he had those affairs, she actually watched a many videos over and over and over. And I said it. She became so obsessed. She watched the movements, the positions, the physicality, you know, of other women. This isn't normal. And then the the church steps in and pretty much pressures her to stay married to him. And I, let me be quiet because I I wanted to say something else. Okay. So this is when I knew she needed some type of support. Even if you were watching those videos, you don't get on social media and say it to millions of strangers out loud on a public platform. That's where her inner circle failed her. Real bad. You better be careful who you hang out with. If you're one of those people, one of those women that's actually striving to be healthy and your friends and your family and your homegirls and whoever else are not giving you the real deal, switch crowds real quick. The focus should have been assisting this lady with getting herself in order first. But that's not what the men of the church did. And I'm suspecting It was a bunch of men (laughs) that pressured her and rallied around her to stay with the man that is a whoremonger, which leads me to question, is that what y'all doing in that church? (laughs) Okay. I feel this was very manipulative and a self-serving approach, which tells me maybe a lot of women in that particular church have dealt with this type of behavior on a regular basis. This man used this woman to build his legacy, to build his public persona, to cover him when he was caught red-handed. And now that the coast is clear, or he's been caught again, he wants to clear the coast by, by filing for a divorce. Imagine that, ladies. Imagine that. You do all of this for a man. You remember I said, where's your happily ever after? Okay, ladies, you need to listen and listen well. Your goal and your priority in life, this is going to sound really selfish, but I told you there's going to be some moments you're going to clutch your pearls. Your priority in life should be yourself first. Put your mask on first and then offer assistance. And what I mean by your priority in life, I mean your mental health, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being. And having a strong, deeply rooted, deeply rooted spiritual connection to what you believe. Whatever that means to you. Because when you prioritize a man, a relationship, or a marriage over yourself to the point where people can trample over you. And you throw your own mental health out the window for the sake of just having a man. You've missed the assignment. You've missed the assignment. Because there's this like small scripture. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is peace. The wounded are made whole. There is rest for my soul. The wounded are made whole. There's rest for my soul. So if you have been wounded by a man and he has not made that right and your soul and your spirit can't rest because you're constantly questioning, is he lying? What is he doing? Is after five, he was supposed to be home by now. Is he still texting her? That is not freedom. You have become a mental prisoner of your own choice if you choose to stay. And I'm not talking about a one-time hit or a quitter. If a man cheats on you once and you decide to stay, Okay, if he cheats on you twice and you decide to stay, that's on you. Anything beyond two times, that's on you. Whatever cheating means to you, that's on you. Come what may. Let this Derek Jackson thing be a textbook example of why you don't give your whole self over to another person, male or female. And let me tell you why I say that. Because sometimes as women, as parents, we give ourselves over to our children. 
and they grow up. Some of them, not all, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but we got to start talking reality because I want to hit you with a dose of reality. Sometimes we give ourselves over so much so, and we're disappointed when people make a choice outside of us. When your son grows up and chooses a wife and you piss his wife off and he stopped calling you. And the first thing some of you say is, "I, I gave him everything. Who told you to give him everything? You remember, prioritize yourself, your mental health, your emotional well-being. And then when your cup runneth over, you give what you can to others. Because people change just as the seasons do. People change when you place, when you place that amount of trust and that level of trust regarding your well-being in someone else's hands, you're going to come up empty handed every single time. And let me tell you something, Denea Jackson will not bounce back from this anytime soon. Not in a healthy and a robust manner. I don't care what kind of projects that she has going on or how she seems or appears to be on the outside. She will not recover from this anytime soon, especially, and I don't know this to be true, but especially if he's a narcissist. Because once a narcissist gets a hold of you, by the time they leave you, remember he filed for a divorce. By the time they leave you, it's really nothing left. Like that song, you just keep on using me until you use me up. He's used her up. She's going to have to rebuild everything that God intended for her to have in the first place. Peace, wholeness. Remember I said all of that. Liberty, freedom, rest for her soul. She gave it all to him. A month ago, she was just online declaring and decreeing spells on anyone that spoke out against her marriage. This woman is in a dark place. Where is that support that they had next to them when he cheated, when he was out at the first time? Where is that same support for her? Where is the church now? Okay. It is not your job to save anyone. It's their job to save themselves. Now you can pour into people, okay? But it's not your job to save them. And I want to encourage everybody for 2023, men or women, let's pause on going to war for a man or a woman when they wrong as hell. If a man embarrass you in public public, and he has to make a public statement, let that man go handle that. He a man for a reason. You'll be shocked at the amount of pressure a man can take. Don't go running, saving him, declaring publicly that he's a good guy and you love him and y'all let him do that. You know, I see a lot of women um, come out and talk for their men when they are caught cheating. And I'm talking about celebrities. And the first thing I think is let him say it. Let him say it. Because when he can look at the world and say it without you by his side holding his damn hand like his mama, then I'll know it's real. Stand on your own two feet. Look that mistake in the face. So maybe for 2023, that's something you can consider. You know what? I'm not saving anybody. I'm going to love you, but I'm not going to save you. And I feel like that lady's at home probably feeling some kind of way because I guarantee you, The way that she appears on camera, she's not okay. Not not appears on camera, like she's faking. That's what I'm trying to say. She's putting on a strong front. I'm sure as a wife, she said, she's regretful, probably. Like, damn, he's leaving me. This man didn't drug me on Instagram, had me sitting there in a bonnet. I'm coming out declaring and decreeing and uh, casting out demons for anybody that speaks on my marriage. And he's leaving me. You know? So, Denea, this is what I say to you. You're a beautiful girl. Somehow, he has talked to you or you feel that you had to show up like Little House on a Prairie. If you like to get your hair straightened, queen, go get your hair straightened. Pop your shit. Invest in your physical health. 
I've seen a few videos of you working out. Keep it up. Eat good. Get you some sleep. Stay praying, but stay off that internet casting spells. Pour into you. Get you a good circle of support and friends. And if you need to, find a new damn church. Okay? Because he's groomed you to be Molly McButter. And utilizing that to cheat on you. Okay? As a woman, he's groomed this girl into having low self-esteem. No matter how holy he may have encouraged her or told her he wanted her to be, that's not what that man wanted in the bedroom. Come on now, if, we, if we're going to keep it real. Ladies, don't get tricked out of your spots. Don't be walking around in the world for 2023 posing to be something that you're not. Don't get tricked out of doing what's best for you. Don't get tricked out of showing up in a way that makes you feel good about you. Now, we may not always like what we see, but shit, if you like it, we love it. You do you so that no matter what, at the end of the day, if it don't work out, at least you can stand firmly that you were yourself through and through. And that's what's going to hurt her. And that's what's going to eat her up. Okay? Because she played a position that did not lead to a happily ever after. And I want to go in on him, but I still have to hold women responsible. Shit, he, he, he did what he was supposed to do. He showed up time and time again for who he was. He a cheater. Maya Angelou said, when, when people show you who they are, believe them. Some of y'all got to learn once or twice or three times. I don't know. I'm not the type that needs to learn that hard. But for 2023, ladies, let's not get tricked out of who we are. Don't get tricked out of your spot. Okay, we're not doing that no more. And when you think about who he's cheating with, he's cheating with very exotic, not women, exotic bodies. I don't want to say exotic women because then people would think, oh, that means a woman of a different uh, persuasion, like a different race. No, exotic bodies. Those bodies that are not made in a gym, but rather bodies that you have to invest in financially. That's what he's obsessing over that. And when you think about the average Instagram model, they invest a lot of time, effort, and money into their physical appearance and not by way of the gym. Most are not naturally like that. They go to the doctors and they pay good money to look perfect. So he's obsessing over perfection. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit further. Stop saying that's not what men want because that's incorrect. Simply based on what we see men respond to physically, okay? What I'm saying is physically. Cover your ears. Now we're about to talk like adults. I said clutch your pearls. A man's heart causes an erection. See, the heart pumps the blood. So when a man physically responds to an Instagram model, that starts from the heart, baby. (laughs) I'm going to take y'all to school today. You got to have blood from the heart to flow down to the penile area to get an erection. Okay. So if if a man, if you were with a man who doesn't, who's not having a response to you in that way, it's not in his heart. He's responding to Instagram models because that's what he likes. And it trickles down to his penis. Okay? So stop saying men don't like that. They like natural. No, we see what they like by way of what they respond to. Okay? And a man has a right to want what he wants when he's single. He just needs to ensure that he does his due diligence of selecting and picking that out in a wife. And men, that's when y'all go wrong, okay? When you set women up for failure. If you know you like big booties and big breasts, don't marry a little booty and a flat chest because now you're wrong. But also, don't try to convince a woman 
or take a woman who's giving Little House on the Prairie and condemn her emotionally, that emotional uh, condemnation, because what you really want is a fantasy and the escort type of experience. It's nothing wrong with what you want. Make sure if that's what you want, that's what you marry. So I believe Denea is going to have a hard time. She's going to have a really hard time. This man is going to move on, y'all. This man has already moved on. His heart is, when that heart pumps that blood, I told you, down to down there, he's moved on. I don't think he loves this woman. That's not her fault. It became her fault when she stayed and stayed and stayed. It became her fault when she started watching those videos of other women. She should have left and chunked his ass to dues. He's going to move on. He's going to marry again. And I believe he's going to choose a woman more slated on the physical spectrum that he's always fantasized about. Okay. And that's going to break her heart in half again and again. And notice I said again, because he's already broke her the first time to the point she had a mental health breakdown. Then the church coerced her back into going into that relationship when they should have got her clinical support. So dear church, that church, not all churches, you played a part in pressuring that lady to forgive him before she was ready and before she was able to take care of herself mentally. So you're partly responsible for the emotional effects that we're seeing. Now he's leaving her again and she has to relive that. And with the platform that he has, with the visibility that he's going to receive, she's going to have to live this nightmare over every time she sees him with his new woman or his new side chick, if he gets married again. This is a pain she's going to experience. And I'm not sure that without the right support, she'll be able to overcome it. Somebody needs to keep an eye on her. Narcissists come to steal, kill, and destroy. Be not deceived. And now that he's leaving her, which is an indication that he's broken her down to her last drop and there's simply nothing left for him to use, that's why she's going on the internet and it looks like she's crazy. She's having a mental health breakdown behind this man. You don't bounce back quick after being with a narcissist. Allegedly, I'm saying narcissist because I don't know if he is, but he acts like one. It'll take her years to get over this. She'll remember every memory, every gesture, every touch from him. How he kissed her, how he touched her. Because she has what seems to be an obsessive, compulsive uh, thought process. By the time he walks out that door. She'll feel like she's gone through a storm, one of the worst storms that she's ever been through. She's okay now because he hasn't left. But when he closes that door, that's when her real nightmare will begin mentally, physically, and emotionally because she saved nothing for herself. And everything that she had, she gave to him. <laughs>